Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A few weeks ago, I did a video talking about the top five things I wanted to see Adobe do with Lightroom Classic. That list included things I wanted to see Adobe change in Lightroom Classic and things I wanted to see Adobe add to Lightroom Classic. If you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the top five things I want to see Skylum software do with Luminar Neo. In the comment section below, let me know if you agree with my list and feel free to add to it as well. Let's jump right into it with number one. Number one, I think they're going to do this year. We have a couple extensions here, HDR Merge and Focus Stacking. I think going along with those two extensions, the next logical extension would be panoramas. I would like to have the ability to stitch a panorama in Luminar Neo. And as I mentioned, I believe that one's going to happen very soon. Let's go to number two. Number two has to do with Face Enhancer AI. Those of you that follow my channel know that I recently did a video talking about what I believe is a problem with Face Enhancer AI. So what I want to see them do is improve Face Enhancer AI. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, Face Enhancer AI is a feature in the Upscale AI extension and it's also a feature in Super Sharp AI. You can see right here, this little checkbox, Face Enhancer AI. My problem with Face Enhancer AI, as I mentioned in uh, that video, and by the way, if you haven't seen that video, I'll have a link to that in the description below this video, is that it does a little bit too much. In my opinion, it swaps out body parts. Uh, for example, I have this image, it's a stock photo, and it's downscaled 480 by 600. I ran it through Upscale AI in that video, and I ended up with this image. And at first glance, it looks great. But if you look a little closer, those aren't her eyes. They totally changed her eye. Her nose looks considerably different as well. That might be just face enhancer AI, enhancer, or it might be Upscale AI with the face enhancer option, just changing her nose. But her lips are different. So... I would like a little more granular control here. I would like to have the ability to uh, be able to affect her eyes the way I want to affect them and not have them, in my opinion, swapped out. All right, so that's that. Uh, so I want to see Face Enhancer AI improved and give the person that is using it more control over it. All right, let's go to this image okay this as you can see is just a blurry image now i'm just going to go to the edit panel and i'm going to go to super sharp ai and what i'm talking about doesn't necessarily apply only to super sharp ai i'm just going to use low sharpening just just because i think it might go faster uh, maybe this is a uh, number six on the list but i would like to see them have super sharp ai go quicker it seems to take quite a while to work so I would like to see it go faster. But beyond that, my real number three is the AI masking that's available in most of the tools. Most of the tools have a mask called Mask AI. It works great on landscape images. With Mask AI, it will find a road, it'll find the sky, it'll find water, it'll find a building, it'll find a flora. It does that great. But on wildlife images, it doesn't work as well. So I use Super Sharp AI on this image, and you can see there's before and there's after. Now, if I go to masking, again, this isn't unique to Super Sharp AI. You'll see there's Mask AI here, and it's available in a lot of the other tools also. So if I go to Mask AI and I click on it, it's got to think again. It's got to find those different elements that I'm talking about that could be in a scene. There could be a waterfall, there could be trees, there could be a road, right? All right, so I found stuff. I guess. Sky, flora, architecture, water, natural ground. It didn't find a bird, did it? It didn't find an animal. What I found is Mask AI doesn't work well on wildlife and some flower images. So some types of flora, like if you're doing macros of flowers, it doesn't really find the flower. And there's a lot of times where you have a wildlife image or you have a macro of a flower and you want to just apply your sharpening to that or you just want to apply your color adjustments to that, or you just want to apply your structure adjustments to that, and you don't want to apply it anywhere else, 
Well, it can't find it. Now, if I come in and I click on Sky, it takes a while too. I do wish it was faster. You'll see pretty soon a red overlay will appear, maybe. And that red overlay, uh, it's not appearing. But if I go to Flora, maybe click on that one too. There, now we're seeing some red overlays. You see how it's got part of the bird? Let me take Flora off. All right. So you see how it got part of the bird, and, but it got part of the background. It didn't get all the bird, but Flora isn't a parrot. Flora is, you know, flora, you know, grasses and flowers and trees. Uh, architecture. It got more of the bird. Water. It got some of the background. Uh, natural ground. Well, none of those things are in this image. So my point is, I want to see them improve mask AI for wildlife and, you know, some macros of flowers as well. You'll run into this issue. So that's number three. I'm not going to beat that to death, but that's what I want to see them do. Get all off. Okay, let's move to number four. Four and let's go to this image. If I go to the edit panel, you see there's a great tool down here in the portrait section called Portrait Bokeh. Let me open that up and let me take the amount slider and take it just all the way to the right. And you'll see eventually once it kicks in that it does a great job of blurring the background. And you can see that it has options to add to the part that's in focus, add to the parts that are out of focus. You also could affect the softness and strength of all that. You could see that when you hover over it. It's showing you what the subject is, what the portrait is of this young lady. It also could affect the background. You could take brightness down, you can make the highlights glow, you can make it cooler or warmer, stuff like that. It works great. Portrait bokeh. Well, what if you don't have a human there? What if you have a dog or a parrot or, you know, or a, a tree and you want to uh, make that the subject and you want to blur out what is behind it? What I want to see them add to Luminar Neo is an object or non-human subject bokeh or blur. I don't like calling it bokeh because bokeh is the quality of the blur. Uh, the actual, it's just blur, right? So we're just, I want to see them add the ability to blur out that that is around something that isn't a human. So we have portrait bokeh. What we need to have is object blur or non-human subject blur. I want to see them add that to Luminar Neo because there's many times, as I mentioned, especially with wildlife, you, you have, you know, an image of, uh, you know, a bird or something and you want to blur out the background. Well, as I mentioned before, the mask AI doesn't work that great. Um, so let's get some type of bokeh or blur tool for that. All right, number five is something that just bugs me. Uh, let's go to this image of our dog, Fredo, and let's go down to a vignette. I'm going to add a vignette. So I'm just going to take a dark vignette. I'm going to take this all the way down, and I'm going to make it quite large. And let's make it very round. And let's uh, take feathering all the way down. Do you see the vignette? What if I take inner light up? Well, it's making the entire image brighter. Well, what if I choose the subject and put it right between Fredo's eye? Still, do you see the vignette? Well, you don't. The reason why you don't is because the vignette that is available in Luminar Neo is something called a pre-crop vignette. It's not a post-crop vignette. And if I look at the crop on this image, you could see that it's a real tight crop. And now you'll see there's the vignette all the way outside of it. So the vignette is a pre-crop vignette and after you crop it it doesn't affect the actual image that's cropped so i want to see them change their vignette tool from a pre-crop vignette to a post-crop vignette simple as that that's it let me know what you think in the comments below thank you everyone who watches my videos i really do appreciate it talk to you guys soon